Hi, I'm Esther Rogers, and I'm known for spinning creative and textured art yarns. The most frequent question I get when talking about these yarns is, what do you do with them? Of course, they're totally knittable, crocheteable. I highly recommend using a needle or hook size that's appropriate for the bulkiness of the yarn. But in reality, the best way to showcase the beauty and texture of these yarns is in weaving. And this is called inlay because I'm going to inlay, add the yarn into the plain weave that's already happening and I'll be able to weave around it so I can create a pattern with my textured yarn. So you can go all the way across the length or you can add your yarn in somewhere in the middle and give yourself a beat. Now you do want to have some yarn on a shuttle because what you're going to do is every time you throw a pick, what that will do is lock your inlay yarn in to where you've put it. So I could immediately add this yarn back in or I could weave a few rows. How much space are you going to add between your inlay rows? is really totally up to you. And that is what will create your design. So I've done four rows here. So I decided to pull out right in the middle, although you could certainly go all the way across, you could go even further, and this is where your choice comes in the design and pattern that you can create. So I beat, before I change my shed, I will add a pick of yarn, lock that in, change your shed. So you see here now this has been a nice float and these locks are sticking out and I'm going to bring my yarn in this way all the way across. Now the last time I did four rows across, this time I'm only going to do two and again lock that in. So you can really create quite a few very interesting design elements. You can create geometric shapes by just going back and forth, squares or triangles. You can travel your inlay by putting many rows in between that allows your inlay to meander through your cloth. I'm using one of the very dent reeds and what's really cool about this reed is the ability to change the spacing of your warp threads within the same reed so that you can use your inlay yarn to create a supplemental warp thread. So you find where you're going to put it in and then bring it through to now where it's going to be your warp. So I'm gonna pull my needle off and use, this is a supplemental warp weight. Pull your yarn through and then add your weight. And you hook this on and just drop it across the back. But again, remember, your weft yarn is your glue in how it holds everything together. So one, two picks, and then we're gonna advance. And you can already see, even with these two passes of the weft thread, how this is already starting to come together. And what's so cool, by creating that space within the reed, this supplemental warp thread will move up and down with the shed. And so, we weave. So when you've come to the point where you want to change that up, you just pull that back and remove the weight. 
bring it back through. And with the very dent, you can loosen that and slide it back over. Now you can continue with an inlay pattern or you can do a really cool technique that adds some texture to a selvage. So I bring my inlay yarn to an edge. Now we're just going to put it through that end space. You're going to take your shuttle, bring through, and hook that yarn on the side right along. Every time passing through, just making sure that you've caught that yarn on the side right in between. And it just locks that along the side. So if you have a really fringy tail spun yarn, you can just catch your weft yarn in between the curls so that it makes a fringe. Again, pass through. And with that pass through, we have that catching of our side yarn. The key is remembering that your weft is your glue. So that when you're ready to be done with inlay and go back to whatever your cloth is without it, you just want to lock it in with a few picks of yarn. But as long as it's got a couple rows in there, it's locked into your cloth and isn't going to go anywhere. So there's lots you can do with this kind of cloth. You can make scarves, table runners. You can weave narrow strips and sew them together to weave wider cloth. And you can make garments. There are really no limitations to what you can create with the cloth that you weave. The only limits you have are the ones you put on yourself. I can't wait to see what you weave up. <laughs>